Christ is risen. During Easter, we celebrate the saving events of Jesus Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. In Christian worship, each of these was remembered on a, a different day, and the, the final day was the great Easter vigil. It was pre preceded by a fast day, and it was the most holy and joyful night of the entire Christian year, because it proclaimed and celebrated the whole of salvation history and Christ's saving work. It's done in the morning in the modern church because we want to experience that transition from darkness into light, the experience of transitioning from death into life. So let's begin uh, by listening to a hymn, and you can even sing along if you'd like to. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy morning, in which Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, we gather as the church to watch and pray. This is the Passover of Christ, in which we share in Christ's victory over death. Let us pray. God of life, through Jesus Christ you have bestowed upon the world the light of life, Sanctify this new fire, and grant that our hearts and minds may also be kindled with holy desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ's rising, that we may attain to the feast of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The light of Christ rises in glory, overcoming the darkness of sin and death. Christ is our light. Hear now the word of the Lord as proclaimed from the 20th chapter of John about Easter. Early on the first day of the week, that would be Sunday, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. Now this would have been actually a slight embarrassment to the disciples. They knew that a, a testimony of a woman back in those days was not as strong as a testimony of a man. And, and so if they could have changed this and made it a man who found this, they definitely would have. But we know from this historical account that it was Mary Magdalene, one of uh, Jesus' disciples, though not one of the apostles, who was the first to find that the stone had been removed. And let me tell you, that stone was not removed so that Jesus could get out. It was removed so that we could see in and see the miracle that had taken place. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, that's John, and whenever John talks about himself in the Gospel of John, he always refers to himself that way as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He just wants us to, to know that especially about him, or at least his opinion. So she ran and went to Peter and John and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So her first reaction isn't, he's risen, that there's been a resurrection. And also, Peter and John aren't quite sure exactly what happened. In fact, uh, the, the first thought from Mary is, well, somebody came and took the body away. Now, this would have been difficult. I mean, those stones were tough to move. It wasn't that hard for a strong man to put the stone into position. But once it was in position, to get it out of there took a couple strong men and equipment. So uh, this uh, just making the tomb empty in human terms would have been extremely difficult. In fact, with, with Mary Magdalene and perhaps some friends going there, I don't know how they anticipated getting into that tomb and to do the, the work that they wanted to do because they wanted to honor Jesus, you know, by uh, anointing his body. But they would, that would have been a bad plan because this stone should have been in the way. 
So Mary tells Simon Peter and Jesus that the, the Lord has been taken away. And then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. So again, John wants us to know, you know, he made it, he made it first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. That's, that's interesting about the linen wrappings, because if it was a grave robber, as uh, some of the early um, detractors of Christianity would have alleged, and even modern uh, folks today, those who don't believe in the resurrection, might admit, yes, the body was gone, but they'll say, well, there's some other explanation. Well, if these linen wrappings were there, well, that was the expensive part. You know, the, the body itself had no value. The linen wrappings would have been what you could have, have sold. And so that those linen wrappings were left behind uh, tells us that this was not a grave robbing. Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. This word believed comes up a lot in the Gospel of John. It has to do with a complete change of the framework of someone's mind. Not merely the adding of a little bit of information, but a change. And, and this word belief also has this uh, concept of it, of faith. It has this idea of following in it. You know, th this word belief is a much deeper word than, than we might say, well, I believe it might rain today. No, belief is supposed to be deep. It's, it's supposed to be a, a heart relationship, uh, a trust in someone or something. In this case, when he says that he believed, what we mean is that he believed that Jesus had rise, risen from the dead. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. So John is the first to really understand what has happened on this morning. That instead of the normal course of action since the beginning of time, that those uh, who die remain dead and who knows what happens to them, now someone has broken through those bonds. There is no longer a, uh, a inflexible barrier between life and death. And because that bond has been broken, we know that it can be broken again. And we know that Jesus was the only one to be able to break free from this in, in this uh, same way. To be resurrected after three days in the tomb, or at least parts of three days. For him to do that proves that he is strong enough to do it again. To do it for us. To do it for all those that we love. For all those who are in love with Jesus Christ, we also have this hope of the resurrection because Jesus was first and he broke through this barrier. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Here, verse 11. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. So Mary, although she is the first witness of these events, she has not put it together quite yet for herself. And so she is still trying to figure out what happens, and she won't leave. The other disciples went home. Peter perhaps not quite getting it, John getting it. But Mary, she won't leave until she finds out what happened to her Lord. Mary Magdalene had been very close to Jesus throughout uh, his ministry, and, and she just could not go home not knowing exactly what had happened. And so she stays and she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And so a dialogue happens with angels, and I'm sure Mary Magdalene knew these weren't just regular folks. I mean, the, uh, uh, the description of them in white and, and sitting where there had been no one just a few moments ago must have told Mary that this was something you know, really exceptional, that, that these were angels. And yet she does not uh, respond to them you know, as if that they were powerful beings from, from another dimension. Uh, <coughs> instead, she simply answers their question. Woman, why are you weeping? And she says, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. So she apparently is still under the misconception that Jesus has simply been taken away, and that if, uh, uh, if his body could be found, then she could do the, the ritual that she had intended to try to uh, give honor to him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. So in her tears... 
she turns around, she sees Jesus, but she doesn't expect to see Jesus. And you know how it is when you see someone out of context. You, you don't expect to see them, and, and so you don't recognize them right away. Uh, Mary Magdalene was certainly not expecting to see the risen Lord standing right in front of her. And so she just supposes perhaps that he's the gardener. Woman, why are you weeping? Jesus said to her. And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And so Mary Magdalene is offering to undo this uh, indignity that has been done to Jesus. You know, she'll take the body and bring it back and put it back in the tomb and everything will be fine. Well, as fine as they could be, considering the fact that uh, the person that she believed was the Messiah, uh, the Christ who has come to save the world, is now dead. So she's still acting out of this uncertainty, this, uh, this belief that Jesus remains dead. And then it all changes. And it changes the same way that it would change for most of us when Jesus says our name. Our name is something that just has a certain power to it. And when someone says our name, we know that voice. And that's what happened. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And so in that moment, when Jesus speaks her name, she knows that it's true, that he is risen. And everything changes. And she recognizes uh, who Jesus really is. Uh, she recognizes that life is never going to be the same for her or for anyone. And, and she is ready now to dedicate her life to proclaiming this news. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And so Jesus gives her instructions what to do. And don't we need to know what to do when we have received such powerful information? Once we know that Jesus is risen, we just cannot contain it in our hearts uh, to know that now life is not the same, that death cannot hold us, and that Jesus is more powerful than sin and death, and that resurrection uh, will be uh, the order of the day for all those who have come into contact with Jesus and accepted him into his heart. We need to know what to do about that. And so Jesus is very clear. Go tell first the people that you know best. Tell my brothers, the people you've been traveling around with for the last two, three years, tell them what has happened. And so Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said in these things to her. And so Mary Magdalene begins the, for the first time of many times to proclaim what Jesus had done, that he had broken free. And so as we come to this day of Easter, and we once again reenact those events of the, of the first resurrection, we want to find a way to tell somebody about this. Tell someone, Christ is risen. And perhaps they will respond to us, Christ is risen indeed, knowing uh, that there is a connection between us and them, that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, because we surround and, and hold dear the center of our faith, that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he is risen from the dead. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection by the renewing of your Spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have worshipped together on this, the most holy day of the Christian year, the day of Easter. Let us go forth joyfully to proclaim what we have heard and experienced today. Hear these words of Colossians, the third chapter, as a benediction. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Go in peace. Happy Easter.